Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're continuing on with AP Physics 1, some more dynamics questions. And these are the uh, free body diagrams, net force equation kind of problems. Okay, so if you're struggling with that, don't worry, you're not alone. A lot of people do, and it's just a lot of practice, which is why we're doing these videos and doing these problems. Okay, so a 300 kilogram box rests on a platform attached to a forklift shown above. Starting from the rest at time t equals zero, the box is lowered with a downward acceleration of 1.5 meters per second squared. I want to write that down. It's 300 kilograms. Determine the upward force exerted by the horizontal platform on the box as it is lowered. Okay, so let's do the free body diagram on this block. I have gravity pulling down on him. Mg. And then the, the platform is pushing up on him, right? Otherwise, the box would just fall. So it's the normal force. Anything else acting on the block? Nope. Where does this come in? This is the net acceleration. So I do the net force equals ma. Now, in this case, because uh, it's accelerated downward, I'm going to say downward is positive. So I'm going to say uh, net force equation mg minus the normal force equals ma. Okay, but I know, and I'm going to assume, um, you know, uh, g is 10 meters per second squared. That's just simpler. So I could say this is 300 newtons, because this is 300 kilograms times 10 meters per second minus fn equals 300 times 1.5, and that's 450 newtons. Oh, this would be 3,000 newtons. Sorry, my bad. So the normal force here is equal to 3,000 minus 450, and that's equal to 2550 newtons. So that's the force that the platform is going to put out, right? It doesn't need to support the entire weight because we're kind of letting it fall a little bit. You know what I mean? Like it's easier to sort of let something like kind of drop a little bit. And so that's why the force, the platform doesn't have to exert the, it doesn't have to exert the full 3000 newtons. Okay, at time t equals zero, the forklift also begins to move forward with an acceleration of two meters per second squared while lowering the box as described above. The box does not slip or tip over. Determine the frictional force on the box. So now I got to look at the, the boxes, the net force in the x direction. Well, um, you see, the box wants to stay still. So as it slides, okay, um, it is having a frictional force that's resisting. That's frictional is what kind of what's pushing it along. So we're going to say there's a force of friction like here, which is equal to mu times the normal force. Um, it does have gravity, but I'm just looking at the x direction right now. And that's it. There's nothing else in the x direction. Nothing else is pushing on it or anything like that. Okay. Now, the, so the net force in the x direction is mu n, and that has to equal m times a, the acceleration in the x direction, which we already know. So the coefficient of friction has to equal ma over the normal, oh, sorry, I keep, this is mu times the force of normal force. I'm trying to get used to writing it as fn because I, I've seen that as more common um, in, by, from a lot of teachers. Okay, so ma equals fn. This is 300 kilograms times 2 meters per second squared over the normal force, which we already found from part A was 20, 50, 50 newtons. Because nothing changed in the y direction. So this is everything we did in part A holds, even though we're starting to accelerate to the right. Okay, so mu is equal to uh, 600 over 2550. We cancel zero, divided by five, I get 12 over 51. 51 divided by three, that's four over 17, I think. So mu is four over seventeen. You can you get a calculator on this test, so you can use the calculator. But I'm I'm just lazy. Um, oh, that they actually didn't want. They determined the frictional force. My bad. Um, this is part C. The frictional force was mu times F n, which is just um, which was equal to m a, which would have been six hundred newtons. So that's the force of friction. That's the, so that's B and C. So to determine an equation for the path of the box that expresses y as a function of x, not not of t, assuming that at time t equals zero, the box is a horizontal position x and a vertical vertical position two meters above the ground, with zero 
velocity. Okay, so now I'm trying to figure out how x is related to y. So you want to do it in terms of t first and then sort of eliminate t. That's kind of the strategy I want to do. So x of t, well, I know delta x, which is his x position, x minus x naught. But if he starts at 0, we're just going to say x of So I'm going to say x of t is equal to v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. Okay, it starts with initial, no initial velocity, so it's just one half times its acceleration, which was two meters per second squared horizontally, to t squared. So this is um, just equal to t squared. Okay, so that's the x position. The y position also equals the same thing. It's equal to, well, y not, well, the, the, the change in the y position is equal to v not t plus 1 half at squared. Again, in the vertical direction, it starts off with no vertical. So this is, but the thing is, is I have to put this y naught because I start off at 2 meters. So this is y of t minus 2 is equal to, that part is 0, 1 half. Now, in this case, if I'm going to say 2 meters above, then this downward is negative. So the, this is negative acceleration, right? Because if I'm going to say I'm two, positive 2 meters above, then downward has, that means upward is positive and downward has to be negative. So this is minus 1.5 meters per second squared, t squared. Um, so that makes y of t is equal to um, minus 0.75 t squared plus 2. I bring the 2 to the other side. Okay. But we already said that t squared is equal to x. So I can write this as y is equal to negative 0.75 x plus 2. Okay, so what I did was I just used my kinematic equations to solve for x and y, and then I I replace I got rid of t by replacing t squared with x. You know, I just sort of solve for t and then plug in for x there. Okay, and then sketch the path taken by the block. Um, so it starts off here, and then it would hit the ground when x is at like um, two divided by. Let's see, that's three fourths. 8 over 3, so that's 2 and 2 thirds, 2 and about there. And then it's just a straight line between those two points, right? Because this is just a straight line. This is x and y. It's kind of what we're plotting here. Okay, that's it. So most of that problem, I mean, there were some kinematic problems in there, obviously D and C, which is like pretty common to mix a little bit in the free response questions. But um, I think the crux of the beginning part was definitely the free, uh, free body diagram. So I hope you guys found that helpful. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.